The motherboard is probably the most fundamental central element of your computer. And so in part one of motherboard basics here, let's get some information kind of laid down about the motherboard that you need to have straight in your brain before you go take this exam, okay? Now the motherboard obviously is the skeleton of the computer. It is kind of the bones on which everything else fits. It takes care of the main operations and functionalities of the computer. Now, if you look at a motherboard, we're actually talking about this green thing, right? This green plasticky kind of thing that has all of this stuff stuck to it, all these numbers written on it, and all this stuff that's happening here. Now, the motherboard provides the foundation for all connections and interactions between all the pieces and parts. Now, what's interesting about a motherboard is if you look a little closer to it, all right, you're going to notice that there are these little, looks like freeways from about, you know, 20,000, 30,000 feet with little tractor trailers on them here. And these things are used to connect. Notice this is the CPU. This is the upper corner of the CPU. If I back up, we're looking at this area right around in here. You see where I'm moving my mouse around? We're looking at that little area right there. And this is how the CPU passes data out to other various parts and other equipment that's also attached to the motherboard. Now, what's really interesting about a motherboard, if you want to nerd out here, is these pathways are actually on this layer, and there's about four layers of a motherboard with different layers. Kind of think about a parking deck. So there's a lot of connections going on within a motherboard. Now, all of these individual pathways are generally referred to as traces or buses. And so when you hear about a front side bus, an expansion bus, that sort of thing, you're talking about connections to other pieces of equipment. Now, obviously, just like a freeway, the wider these connections are or the more lanes that are involved, the more data we can move across them at one time. This is why we hear about things like a bigger front side bus for faster blah, 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 and all that. Now, these buses, again, think of them as wires. This is how the CPU communicates with all the other parts on the motherboard. This is why if the motherboard gets cracked or if it gets scratched or gouged really bad, some of those pathways are going to be broken and the motherboard becomes useless and must be replaced. This is why you always want to be very careful when you're pressing down on the motherboard or you're pulling on the motherboard. If you ever crack it or pop it, you're probably going to have to replace it, and that can be quite expensive and quite irritating. Now, motherboards come in various shapes and sizes, and when you open different PCs, you'll see different shapes. But you need to understand these shapes and sizes are standardized, and there's not that many different ones out there, really. And what the standard shapes and sizes are doing is determining, first of all, the size, what kind of case it will fit in, and then the different standard shapes and sizes also lay out standard locations for the various pieces and parts that are attached to the motherboard. This is called the motherboard form factor. Now, there have been a number of form factors since the first PC. Just like everything, IBM released the first IBM PC 3270, and it hit the desktop, and it was all pure metal, and it weighed, I don't know, 50, 60 pounds. And it had a large motherboard in it called the AT. It didn't take too long for everybody to realize that, you know, these parts weren't arranged in the best order. And for some of the new expansion slots we needed and cards we needed, it needed to be arranged a little differently. And so the ATX form factor ended up showing up on the scene, and it is now the reigning form factor champ. Now, the ATX form factor offered a few improvements over the AT. First of all, it was smaller in size. We quickly realized we didn't need computers that sat right on the desktop and took up half the desk. There's much better placement of components. They moved some things around on the motherboard. They changed where the power supply unit was placed because the power supply unit fan is what draws air through the case. And by putting it in a better location, it pulled the air through more efficiently and gave us better cooling for every piece and part that was on that motherboard. And of course, you know, the CPU is a little heat generator, and the hotter things get in there, the more problematic things become. The CPU, the RAM, and the expansion slots are better positioned on the ATX form factor. Number one, for easy access for people like you and I who have to work on these things. And the big one is they don't interfere with each other. 
We had situations with the AT that if you had certain expansion slots used, part of the cards might cover up the RAM. And so if you wanted to work on RAM, you had to pull out cards and you just had all kinds of, you know, cascading issues with taking parts off to try to correct things. And so the ATX form factor took care of that. So what I'm going to do is stop right here. This will be the end of part one. Join me in part two and we'll talk about some more aspects of the motherboards and form factors and so forth.